purpose around these people. Hello guys, welcome to Talking News, Chasing a Murderer. Please don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and also hit that notification bell if you would like notifications when I do have new uploads. Today guys, we, I'm taking you to Las Vegas, aka Sin City. And you guys remember that I am covering awareness of um, what I call the violent porn and its effects that it has on this nation, especially murder. How many more murders are we going to have before people start to realize the impact of um, this type of pornography on our society? This story is going to tell you about Esmeralda or Esme uh, Gonzalez. And she is a young woman that seeked refuge in America. She's from Mexico. She was chasing the American dream. Sadly, uh, I believe she took the wrong form and used her youthful, beautiful, you know, female body to reach those dreams. And sometimes all or a lot of times can lead to tragic endings. This reminds me of the McKenzie case we just covered not that long ago. So Ms. Gonzalez lived in Las Vegas and um, she was going to school there. And in May, exactly May 31st, she disappeared. And according to her friends and neighbors, they say that she worked in the adult industry. And I think we know what that means. Neighbors that knew her said that she was just an amazing sweet girl that she carried, you know, this really bright light whenever she was around. She had a toy poodle that she loved and adored. And she was often, you know, sat in a bench that was outside her house and talked to her neighbors. According to her neighbors, Miss Gonzalez didn't live but a few minutes away from a man named Christopher Palapino. Now, according to some of these sources that I'm looking at right now, remember, I'm just picking this story up, so some of it might not be 100%. Miss Gonzalez worked, um, she also was on Instagram. And on there it says she was an adult entertainer. Um, she had 300K followers. And according to pretty much all the news articles, they're saying that she had tons and tons of glamorous pictures um, on Instagram. Now, I wanted you guys to know this about her um, before we started getting into her story. So, Ms. Gonzalez was last seen the end of May. They have surveillance uh, video of her when she, she visited a car dealership and then later on they see her in the residence uh, surveillance cameras she's walking outside in lingerie and heels according to her family miss gonzalez suffers from several mental illness uh, problems such as schizophrenia and bipolar she's bipolar um and she had not taken her medicine for about a week. And I guess that's right at her disappearance. They didn't really make that too clear. Now remember guys, some of this might not be 100%. So while she was outside in lingerie and heels, she walks up to the wrong house. And there's kind of some conflicting stories about what happened next. Some stories say that she uh, was asking for a ride we don't know where she was also knocking on somebody's door trying to get in their house and they told her that she was at the wrong house and she is later seen walking towards christopher uh, christopher's home which is just a few minutes away now according to the witnesses um, that said that she was trying to get in the house she seemed disoriented you know she just didn't seem like she was all there and it's after this night that Miss Gonzalez disappears. For months, Miss Gonzalez's brother put up pamphlets. He started a page on Facebook. 
he, he was out to try to find his sister. But there was no um, information at the time he was searching. He couldn't find out anything. Now, according to what we know right at this moment, it wasn't until July 18th that an anonymous tip come into the police department. So let's go over this timeline real quick. So May 31st-ish, um, she disappears. About a week later, the brother uh, calls the police and says, you know, something's not right. A missing person's put out. And here we are, we're in July. And someone's, you know, they're coming forward and giving the police a tip. The tip said, and there's several different um, stories on this as well, that Preston Tino, uh, Preston Pino, sorry, I don't even know if I'm saying that right, so we'll call him Christopher or CP, was involved with the disappearance of Miss Gonzalez. Then they, the police get a second tipster. According to the article, it says that uh, Christopher, they tell him that Christopher killed the missing girl. Other articles say it's a friend of uh, Christopher's who was uh, hanging out with Chris one night. He was high on meth and he blabbed about killing Miss Gonzalez. According to Chief Deputy District Attorney, uh, Pamela, I do not know how to say her last name. These, I'm just learning all, I just seem to find all these names that I've never seen before. After gathering all the evidence that they did and talking with Christopher, Elisa Mort, and the other witness, Gonzalez was at CP, or Christopher's house, the last night she was seen on surveillance camera. According to some documents, it says that he actually uh, got her high on some meth. And for some odd reason in this article, it says straight after that, that Christopher was not aware of her mental illnesses. Christopher claims that Miss Gonzalez started acting very bizarre and started speaking in the devil's tongue. And according to the criminal complaint, Gonzalez was... Um, she was tied to the bedpost for an extended period of time. They don't say how long before her life was actually taken. It also mentions that Miss Gonzalez threatened to call the police because of the drugs um, he had given her. And a lot of what we're going to go through, it just really doesn't add up. Christopher said that he untied Miss Gonzalez, but when he did... She punches him in the face. According to this article, that's when Christopher said that he strangled Miss Gonzalez until he thought she was gone. But some point later, she wakes up. Now it gets really hazy here. I mean, nobody really understands already. I mean, none of this is really making sense. It sounds like she was making a work call and it went, as far as I can tell right now, it just went and turned into a horror movie, basically. Because, as I mentioned, the uh, violent porn and stuff, especially, you can, there's a lot of stories related to that. Where they kind of really push death to its edge. I mean, that's just something that they get into. And sometimes it goes way overboard. But... This doesn't seem the case with this guy because once he strangles her and she comes back, um, she, he, what we're hearing is he poisoned her afterwards. He injected her with pool chemicals of some sort. That is rumor right now, guys. We don't have uh, the affidavits or anything like that right now saying that, but all the articles are saying that that's uh, a possibility. And so at that point, he takes Miss Gonzalez, encases her with concrete in a wooden box. He then calls a friend 
to come help him move this box and take it out and hide it somewhere. So this friend comes over, which we think is Cassandra Garrett, and they load this box into a U-Haul. They drive this U-Haul out into the desert, take the box off the truck, leave it in the middle of nowhere. But they end up leaving the U-Haul dolly behind. So Christopher returns home, but he fled to Belize. But a short time later, he returns back home. And when he returned, police arrested him. Now, according to some articles, they're saying that um, Garrett, the friend of Christopher, they both started panicking because they realized they left the U-Haul dolly um, out there at the dump site. And what's strange about his friend is this friend goes by several different aliases. Cassandra Garrett goes by Cassandra Bascones, Cassandra Garrett, Cassandra Fran, and Nikki Hart. Now there was a second person arrested and that is the girlfriend of Christopher and her name is Lisa Mort. There's not really a lot on her right now. But what we do know is, um, at, we don't know where this happened, but she, at one point she was talking to Christopher, her boyfriend, and he is recorded saying or warning her not to talk or speak to anyone. He then also directed uh, Lisa to wipe her phone clean. Lisa was arrested on um, drug charges, which is not related to uh, Gonzalez's missing or um, murder. But what we know right now is that uh, according to police documents, she refuses that she knows anything about Miss um, Gonzalez. Now, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, they found Miss Gonzalez in a desert on October 8th. I think uh, Lisa was arrested on August 27th. I apologize, I somehow missed Christopher's arrest date, but I'm sure I'll cover it in another video sometime. But what I did find out is um, police say that on June, in June, sorry, Christopher was seen at the Home Depot purchasing 60-pound concrete bags. So the evidence is definitely weighing up against this man. Uh, it definitely looked like he is guilty. Other evidence that police have is they have Cassandra Garrett, the friend. She can be seen cleaning up the garage on uh, Christopher's home. Right now, uh, Christopher is being held at Clark County Detention. And his court date was set for October 22nd. And let me see if I can pull up a clip for you. He has to leave. He advised my secretary that he's unable to come back. It's going to be transferred anyway because I have a conflict with Mr. Terry. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so I love him. Not because I have an issue with him, but because, well, we'll just leave that. Um, were you actually, was he arraigned yesterday? Were you, were you given a copy of the complaint yesterday and advised of the charges? Uh, uh, no. He was? Okay. So, did you get a copy of the complaint? I didn't get a copy of the full complaint. <clears throat> well, you probably didn't get a copy of all the discovery. No, Did I you get it. the complaint? Yeah, I believe so, yes. It says what the charges are. Yes, yes. Okay. You understand those charges, correct? Yes. And I understand that you or your family have retained Mr. Terry? Yes. All right. So as a result, um, he did come in and advise that he was going to be confirming, and this case is going to be transferred. Do you have the new court? Yes, it's going to be Justice Court Department 3, and it's going to be scheduled for October 22nd at 8.30 for further proceedings. Yeah. All right, very good. So I think what they'll do with that... Okay, guys, so this, what you're going to be viewing right now is uh, a video her brother made when she first went missing, and also letting you know, guys, I had to change environments. But um, this is the part where we're going to talk about this case. And, you know, us talking news, guys. And so we can speculate a little bit, uh, not disrespectfully. But just the, a lot of this, I also want to bring awareness to the violent porn. It really seems like she had an appointment. 
that night and I guess we will find out in the future but that isn't for certain as a maybe he was a client that night it seems that that might have been the case but with that being said he has been charged with kidnapping so there's a possibility he kidnapped her so maybe she went to his house and knocked on the door we're not certain what really doesn't add up is the fact that um of how they're saying this played out it doesn't really make that much sense and really you know especially when you know what she's doing for a living people like her and um mckenzie guys if you haven't checked out the mckenzie case and i wanted to do an update on that case but i haven't had time that case has had some very shocking um add-ons uh, AJ I kind of figured that he didn't only have a one-time experience with violent um, you know interactions and it turns out that the police are discovering that he does have several others on the back burner they're digging through that uh, through his computer and all kinds of things and they're just coming up with all sorts of things but to me you know girls this is a very dangerous profession i want you guys to know this and i realize how easy it is to make money off of doing things like this or just even just looking pretty but there are consequences we live in a very sick world and it's a very scary world and i want you women to start being um i want them to care about themselves a little bit more than they do so they are kind of talking about miss gonzalez um that she's having a mental crisis but it really doesn't sound like a mental crisis to me it sounds like a drug crisis of some sort and i will look forward um, to seeing you know this case unfold as well i want to know all the details on this case especially um at the beginning of this case and the accusations that everybody has in place. I mean, I really don't think they're fitting into the puzzle like it should. The fact that she was in lingerie and heels says something different for me, if you understand her profession. And what I'm worried about is the fact that um, maybe she took something beforehand because what you'll read a lot about uh, in these type of cases is a lot of time drugs are involved when dealing with violent interactions there are many many stories and Bruce the killer Bruce that was in Canada look that story up I have that uploaded it's one of my first videos I, I don't know how good it is but um he was gay and he was in, also into the violent interactions and one of the survivors from um one of their meetups said that drugs were part of that um little game that they played so this kind of makes me wonder if maybe that played a role uh may 31st and miss gonzalez so you know i look forward to getting all the details on that so that we can figure out what happened to her it's really a sad case she was an absolutely just beautiful girl and her neighbors say that she was just uh, just as pretty inside as she is outside anyways that's what my channel's about guys it's raising awareness to the new problems that america's facing and the fact that you know violent is something people are seeking it's no longer what they're hiding from people are seeking it and it's for pleasure it's not that it's something new it's just it's a new time it's an all-time high and it's ending in very devastating stories needless to say well right now i don't have a lot more on this case and um, i'm wanting to take a little bit of a break but i wanted to get this case out there because this is one of the topics one of my main topics that i cover 
you know, and I believe that happened with Savannah Spurlock, McKinney, McKenzie, and like I said, guys, go flip back. It's probably one of my very first videos. A guy named Bruce can't remember his last name, but yeah, he was meeting gay guys, other gay guys on uh, gay sites, and even in the gay communities. And just, he was a predator, and they were just unknown victims. Why the story didn't um, catch more light, I have no idea. But that's a story that really should have been one of the top stories out there. Okay, guys, I want to say, um, you know, I appreciate all you guys very much. You know that. And um, I'm going to try to take a little bit of a break which I always have trouble doing because I want to just keep working. Uh, but anyways, I love you guys, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.